Now at noon, the trial of a former sheriff's deputy accused of killing a teen gets underway this week. We have the very latest from a pretrial hearing. Plus, we continue to hear from the people who knew Arkansas filmmaker and journalist Brent Renault following his death in Ukraine. The nation's unemployment rate is falling this afternoon, but some businesses are still struggling to find workers. We take a closer look at why. The Hogs are going dancing when you can catch the Arkansas Razorback men and women's basketball teams later this week. But first, we start here with the trial for a former Lone Oak County Sheriff's deputy accused of killing a 17 year old. That trial gets underway this week. Back in June, Michael Davis pulled Hunter Britton over for an early morning traffic stop. Authorities say the now former deputy fatally shot that unarmed teen. THV 11's Mercedes McKay was inside the courtroom for today's pretrial hearing. Mercedes, bring us up to speed. Michael, no cameras were allowed inside the courtroom, and that's how it's going to be for the rest of the week and for the remainder of this trial. Now, the trial is here at the Cabot Readiness Center, and it was moved here for several reasons, but one of the main reasons is because there's not a lot of windows. They're only really at the top of the courtroom, and that's so that the jury cannot hear anything else that's going on outside. The prosecution and defense team went over different jury selection, evidence, and witnesses this morning. Now, one of the things that was talked about the most was how both sides will be allowed to phrase questions to witnesses. Witnesses. Basically, neither of them can ask about whether Davis's actions were quote reasonable. Now the judge says that's up to the jury to decide. And speaking of the jury, I asked someone close to Britain how he thinks jury selection is going to go, and he believes it's going to be tough. It's uh, you don't have to live in Arkansas to know about this. It's worldwide. I mean, people's reached out. I can't tell you the people's reached out to us from everywhere. I mean, it's gonna be hard. You're almost gonna be like a hermit if you ain't heard about this case. Jury selection begins tomorrow at 9 a.m. Now, the judge did add that no one can wear T-shirts or have any signs in their cars once the jury arrives. Coming up tonight at 5 and 6, I'll take a look back at this case and how we got to today. Live in Cabot, Mercedes McKay, THV 11 News. We're starting off the new work week with some unsettled weather making its way in here from the south southwest. We began the day with plenty of sun, then the clouds rolled in and that's holding the temperatures down a little bit. Temperatures right now into the upper 40s to lower 50s across the region. Off to the west, though, you're seeing more sun. So, Mina, you're at 57 and 59 in Fort Smith. Those clouds are producing a little bit of light shower activity or some sprinkles making their way through Pulaski County right now. Also, Faulkner County. So, don't be surprised if you see a passing shower out there through the course of the afternoon. Highs today, upper 50s, low 60s. But our real chance of showers and storms will be entering the picture while you're sleeping tonight. You can see the red showing up in southwest Arkansas, and there's a very, very slim chance one or two of these storms may become strong, possibly severe. The highest threat is going to be for extreme southwestern parts of the state in Texarkana, but especially into northeast Texas. I'll have more on that potential coming up later, but today we'll see those highs, upper 50s, low 60s, with that chance of light rain. The chance of rain continues into your Tuesday. I'll let you know what to expect for the rest of the work week coming up. All right, Nathan, see you soon. New information now on a weekend homicide in Little Rock. Officers responded to a shooting on West 65th Street on Saturday. They found 24 year old Malik Brooks, uh, who had been shot along with another victim in a car who was dead. And it was it's actually Brook Inns, excuse me. He was taken to the hospital for treatment. During that time, investigators determined he was a suspect in this case. He's still in the hospital, but will be arrested and charged once he's released. In North Little Rock, police are investigating the city's second homicide of the year. Both of those homicides happening in, within the same week. Last night, officers responded to a shooting at West 38th Street in Camp Robinson Road near a gas station. When they got to the scene, they found a man who'd been shot. He died there at the scene. A suspect has not been named at this time. Anyone with information is asked to call North Little Rock Police. This afternoon, people across Arkansas and around the world are mourning the loss of Little Rock filmmaker and journalist Brent Renault. The 50 year old was killed by Russian forces outside of Ukraine's capital on Sunday. The veteran journalist was known for his coverage on the wars in Iraq and Afghanistan, as well as the drug war in Mexico. Longtime friend and colleague Bo Mattingly says Renault knew the risk he assumed by reporting from Ukraine. It wasn't like he was a wild daredevil that just ran into trouble. He just had this knack and gift and ability to be able to find his way into situations that seem impossible to get into and then have a camera with him 
and be able to show that to the rest of the world. Renault also founded the Little Rock Film Festival with his brother Craig. Several Arkansas leaders and lawmakers are sharing their condolences this afternoon. You can find those right now on THV11.com. President Joe Biden is considering a trip to Europe to discuss the war in Ukraine with his counterparts. Russian forces continue gaining ground in Ukraine. As Natalie Brand reports, Russia is asking China for help. Fighting on the ground gets closer to the Ukrainian capital of Kyiv with all eyes on another round of direct talks between Ukraine and Russia. Both sides have reported progress. A Ukrainian presidential advisor says they're calling for an immediate ceasefire and withdrawal of all Russian troops. Russian shelling hit an apartment building in Kyiv, killing at least one and injuring others. And a Russian airstrike over the weekend hit a key military base in western Ukraine, killing at least 35. The base is a hub for moving military aid and sits about 15 miles from the border of Poland, a NATO member. Russia is, is really getting desperate, right, with it, not only this, uh, this action to try to interdict the supply routes, but also, you know, with this kind of, you know, trying to lay the groundwork for maybe the use of, of chemical weapons, you know, which is, which is concerning. A U.S. official says Russia has appealed to China for support, including the use of military equipment as its invasion of Ukraine intensifies. There will absolutely be consequences for uh, large-scale sanctions, evasion efforts, or support uh, to Russia to backfill them. National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan is meeting with China's top diplomat today in Rome to discuss the crisis in Ukraine. Russia and China deny the reports. Natalie Brin, CBS News, the White House. Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky will make a direct appeal to Congress for more support this week. Zelensky will speak virtually to members of the House and Senate on Wednesday. With prices rising on everything from food to gas, many are looking to their tax refunds to help offset higher costs. Unfortunately, it could be a while before you find those returns in your mailbox. The IRS is still struggling with the backlog of more than 20 million tax returns. Now as tax day looms, the agency says it's planning to hire 10,000 new employees to help. They say that their workforce is the same size now as it was in 1970, and yet the U.S. population has grown 60 percent. The IRS says filing electronically could cut the wait time for your refund to weeks rather than months. And don't forget, tax day falls a little later this year than normal. The deadline to file is April 18th. The countdown to March Madness is on, and both Arkansas basketball teams are going dancing later this week. Let's start with the Razorback men. The Hogs were selected as a number four seed in the West region. They will play the 13th seed Vermont Catamounts, who won their three conference tournament games by an average of 36 points. Arkansas and Vermont have never played in the history of the two programs. Head hog Eric Musselman says the Razorbacks are more than ready. I think it's really exciting for the players. I'm still trying to get over uh, Tampa, but I think it's a, uh, you know, to, to, to see your name called and then find out who you're playing and where you're playing for the student athletes is, a, you know, kind of a, a lifetime memory for them. And, and now the preparation begins. Tip off against Vermont scheduled for this Friday. Is it Friday or Thursday at 820 our time? You can catch that game on TNT. I believe it's Thursday. The Arkansas women are headed to Austin, Texas as the 10 seed in the Spokane region. They'll go up against seven seed Utah. The Hogs are hoping to avoid a repeat of last year, but they fell to 13 seed Wright State 66 to 62 in the first round. That game will air on one of the ESPN channels. Game time and specific channels have not been announced, but we'll let you know Magic. as soon as those details are available. An invasive species of spider that's in the southeastern United States causing some uproar online. We're looking into a claim that these large spiders will colonize the East Coast in a few months. Nathan. We got a lot of clouds out there, Michael. A few showers down the landscape as well. You want to keep that umbrella close by for today, but especially into your Tuesday.